All right, uh, Shalom. Before our sermon, give all praises to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Rachach Rash, to honor to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all the elect Achim, Wa, Agwathim, learning and teaching in truth and sincerity. All right, this is going to be another video. Hey, you know, I don't know what the hell it is. I was trying to upload my videos yesterday, and what normally takes 15 minutes to upload was saying it was taking like four fucking hours. You know, and I had good internet connection, all my other apps were working. So E is just being a, uh, is being a doo doo head, you know. But the point of this video, the times that we're coming into, you just had the uh, elder apostle Ramav. He did the video. Uh, what is it? Um, the word is out, you know. So E knows who who we are, you know. They acknowledge us as a group, and they acknowledge, you know, they got a game plan for us. They're gonna come handle us, you know, in their eyes. And what they want to do, you know, when when that that time comes they want you to leave off of your faith believe that the heavenly father will not save you and that you must obey them and this is not a new tactic that the heathens try to pull off on us we're going to be going to uh isaiah chapter 36 all right these heathen something that they know if they can get us to not believe in the heavenly father then they have us because if we don't have faith in the heavenly father then the faith you know i mean uh, uh basically we will not be covered if we don't believe in the heavenly father and his son yahweh and Yahweh Shai, all right, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Rachachurash. If you don't have faith in that power, then you will be out here and open. So, what they're going to do is paint the real, a really nasty picture. You know, if you don't take the mark of the beast, take paint a really nasty picture for you if you don't do what they tell you. All right, it may involve torture, it may involve straight murder, all right, it may involve kidnapping of you and or of your family, it may involve you being exiled from society or a combination of all these things but that's okay all right so let's go to isaiah 36 and we're going to start at verse uh we're going to start at verse probably like 13 because you had rep Sheka, which is basically and it's actually and this is true which goes a hey, in the assyrian army there's actually a rank called rep Sheka, which is basically like uh uh, let me double let me double up on it because it says this person's name was Rap Shaka, but it's basically like a government rank. It's more more so of a title uh, than a literal name. Yeah, it means chief cupbearer, chief of the officers. It looks like uh, Rob Rob uh, Rob Shakwa. All right, it looks like yep Rob Rob Shakwa uh, Rob Shakwa. All right. And so basically this this is a you know a Babylonian official basically a chief uh, uh, higher up in the army and this rank still actually exists uh, when you go look up this word on Google all right it tells you that there's people in this rank you know it, it, it's basically uh, it's basically a rank you know so just further proof that the Bible is real you know because this word still exists today but we're gonna go to Isaiah 36 we're gonna start at verse 13. It says, Then Reb Shekha stood and cried with a loud voice in the Jews' language and said, hear, hear ye the words of the great king, the king of Assyria. Thus saith the king, Let not Hezekiah deceive you, for he shall not be able to deliver you. Neither let Hezekiah make you trust in the Lord, saying, He will surely deliver us. This city shall not be delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. All right. What did he just say to them? He just told them to blaspheme and not believe the Lord. He said, don't let Hezekiah, your king, convince you that the Lord is going to deliver you out of our hands, us, the Assyrians. The Lord ain't going to deliver you. Y'all are going to die if you don't do what we say. All right, and that's the spirit that Esau is going to come in. Esau is going to be, man, he might, you know, that's a hey, uh, Project Blue Bean. He might get introduced, you know, big white Jesus in the sky. You can't let that shake your faith. You know, this dude is going to pull out the stops. He has to, uh, uh. Go hardcore, hard body against us. Yo, Salaki, y'all give me one second. All right, this dude is going to have to go hardcore, hard body against us to try to get us to denounce our faith. And a statement like this is blasphemy, nigga. This is blasphemy, dog. To tell us, oh, don't y'all, man, the Lord not going to save y'all. The Lord didn't save the these other people that believed in these other gods you know that's the spirit that he was coming in for it says verse 16 it says hearken not to hezekiah for thus saith the king of assyria make an agreement with me by a present and come out to me 
and eat ye every one of his vine and every one of his fig tree, and drink ye every one the waters of his own cistern. So he said, look, if y'all make an agreement with us, you'll be good. We ain't going to come kill you. Just just do, just do what we tell you. All right. Jump down to verse 18. It says, Beware, least Hezekiah persuade you, saying, The Lord will deliver us. Hath any of the gods of the nations delivered his hand out of the hand of the king of Assyria? Where are the gods of Hermoth and Arphad? Where are the gods of Seraphim and Seravain? And have they delivered Samaria out of my hand? Who are they among all the gods of the lands that had that have delivered their land out of my hand? And the Lord, uh, Slakia, that the Lord should deliver Jerusalem out of my hand. That's blasphemy. The guy, you know, the messenger, he said, look, the heathens' gods didn't save them. What make you think your God is going to save you in this land when us, the Assyrians, come up against you? And, and Esau is going to come in that same spirit. Hey, matter of fact, it tells you, you know, he, hey, he, you know, Esau might just start talking shit, you know? I oh, man, we put you mother effers in slavery. We didn't beat down everybody, uh, all these other nations. We got everybody under our system. What you dumb niggas that some of y'all didn't even finish high school, what y'all think y'all gonna do? You know, they're gonna be talking straight, grimy shit to us. All right, let's, let's get this. All right, now this is the mindset of Esau Edom. You know, back then it was the Assyrians. You know, but now today, uh, Esau Edom, he's the modern day Assyrian rolling over us. We're going to go to Isaiah 10. Let's see. 10 and 13 says where he said, by the strength of my hand have I done it, and by my wisdom, for I am prudent. I have removed the bounds of the people, and I have robbed their treasures, and I put down the inhabitants like a valiant man. So this man thinks that he was the one doing it. All right, but come to find out, he's just an axe in the hand that is being used by the Heavenly Father. So this man is going to be boasting of himself, boasting of the fact that he is in control of life and death uh, by way of his mark of the beast. If you don't take it, matter of fact, let's go to let's let's get, let's get that. Uh, let's go get that out of Revelation. They're gonna be telling people if you don't do if you don't take this mark, we will kill you. We don't give a fuck what you believe, you know. Even to the point to where their own people, they're not gonna care if you're a, a white Edomite Christian. If you don't partake in the system, they're gonna threaten you to the death. Revelation 13 and 15, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed, all right? So they're going to tell you, look, if you don't get down with this system, we will kill you. So what must they do? They must influence you to no longer believe in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, to give up your faith and to convert and be a fucking, uh, and be as one of them. Otherwise, die. And you have to be okay with the fact that if you have to die, then you have to die. We cannot apostatize all right romans chapter 8 there should be hey, there ain't nothing on in all of existence that's going to separate the elect from the one third i mean that's going to separate the elect and one third from yahweh bahashem yahweh shai let's get another example just to prove the point that these heathens know that if we sin and go off all right and, do, and if they can disrupt our uh covenant with the heavenly father if they can make us do adverse against the heavenly father and that's when we are up in the open and in the air then they can control us all right this is going to be judith 5 and 20 all right you had achior which it says he was an ammonite you know uh judith 5 and 20 says uh says now therefore my lord and governor if there be any error against this people he was basically telling uh holo furnace who was uh one of the uh, uh generals of nebuchadnezzar's army all right the captain actually i believe second in command it says, now, therefore, my Lord and governor, if there be any error against this people and they sin against their God, let us consider that this shall be their ruin and let us go up and we shall overcome them. So these heathens know that they have to throw off our faith, which is what Reb Shekel was trying to do, y'all. Don't let these MFers throw you out off your square. We cannot let them get us off our pivot. All right. Like in basketball. All right. You come off that pivot foot. That's a fucking foul. You got to you got to hand off the ball and we can't let them get us like that. We cannot let these motherfuckers, boy, if you got to pivot all, if you ever watch certain plays, motherfucker, nigga, <laughs> a spin on that foot for a whole damn five seconds, keep switching uh, damn positions so he can either shoot or get the ball off to one of his teammates. And that's how it is. We got to keep it. Hey, we can't come off our spot. Verse 21, it says, but if there be no iniquity in their nation, let my Lord now pass by. At least their Lord defend them and their God be for them. And we become a reproach. 
for all the world. And this is something that the heathens understood. If we're doing upright, then you can't touch us. But if we're going off, then you can do whatever you want to us. And Esau knows that. That's why he has us in this world of perpetual sin, eating abominations, wearing mixed fabric, uh, 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 you know, damn near uh, building house upon house, uh, having us live so close to these heathen to where we're integrated, all right, getting, getting in with, you know, strange wives, taking on the customs of the heathens and whatnot. You know, they, they've set this plan up very well. So they're, you know, in their little minds, they think they're just going to try to overthrow us. All right, verse 22, it says, And when Achior had finished these sayings, all the people shouted round about the tent and murmured, and the chief of Folo Furnace, and all they that dwell by the seaside and Moab spake that they should kill him. So Achior, what he spoke was true. And it tells you the other men, the other heathens, they didn't even want to hear that. The fact that we if, that we can't overcome them, oh man, fuck that. He, we're going to kill this dude for even saying something like that. So basically these Edomites, these MFers that come up against us, they're going to they're gonna only be in the spirit of if we don't listen to them, they're going to straight kill us. And if anybody says anything different, they're going to get killed too. All right, they're not even going to listen to the reason of their own people. All right, say, for instance, if you have a, a group of soldiers, they come across, you know, a little Israelite family hiding out. You know, if nine out of ten of those soldiers wants to kill that family and that one soldier says, no, nah, man, y'all, man, man, they just just leave them alone. All nine of them dudes going to turn and put rounds on that dude and then, fit, and then take out the Jake. All right, so they're going to be in the spirit of killing and destroying us. All right, but hey, if you take heed unto them that's not going to make you safe either and there's a whole host of chapters that tell you that i believe what one of them isaiah 28 all right thinking you made a covenant and agreement with hell but you're going to get destroyed all right and then rap shaka all right these uh th that that chief cupbearer he wants you to make an agreement in today's time and we cannot make an agreement with hell all right with death and hell we can't do that all right we cannot make a confederacy to all them to whom this people shall uh, to shall make to, shall say confederacy. All right, that's Isaiah eight and twelve. All right, let me get another scripture. Let's go to. Uh, we're gonna go to Second Edges. You know, because as soon as you apostatize and give up your faith and think that you're gonna be good and think that you're gonna get to enjoy the new world order with with E, what is he gonna do to you? All right, Second Edges sixteen. And I'm gonna start at where's that? Yep, second address 16 and 69. We're gonna go to Salaki, y'all. You know, I'm on the road. Yep, uh, second address 16 and 68. It says, For behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you, and they shall take away certain of you and feed you, being idle, with things offered unto idols. And they that consent unto them shall be had in derision and in reproach and trodden underfoot. So those that consent, you may be straight for a time. You may convert for a time, abandon, you know, the wicked of our people. They're going to think they're going to be straight. And then what? It says they shall be had in derision and reproach and trodden underfoot. They're going to turn and betray you. All right. This man is the devil. He's never been our friends. He's never given an F about us. This nigga, he will, he will literally lie and lie and lie until all and lie. Just lie. Just lie. Until nothing. He'll just lie. There is no until anything. This dude is going to lie his way into the kingdom of heaven. Even when we bust him up in his head, you know, put putting them chains on him, he's still gonna keep lying, you know. And so, so how does it look to betray the heavenly Father, betray His Son, betray your own people, line with the enemy, and then the enemy betray you, and then the heavenly Father punish you, you know? So we can't go out like that. So we have to maintain the faith. We have to maintain our integrity. All right, and we'll do this, you know. We'll, hey, we can get a basic, you know. So basically, the whole point of this video. Don't let this man convince you to not trust in the Lord. We have to trust in Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. He is our shield and our buckler, like the scripture says. Proverbs 18 and 10, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. Khan. So we believe in Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. We're going to be safe. Fuck what they talking about. All right, shit. And when you finish reading that Isaiah, when you go to Isaiah 36 and Isaiah 37, it tells you that same, basically the Assyrian army was destroyed by an angel what did it say 185,000 uh, then the king of Assyria at that time Sennacherib once he left then went back home two of his sons killed him so basically the heavenly father embarrassed the Assyrians and he's going to embarrass this man today all right with the return of Yahweh Shai he's going to send his son down to fuck shit up all right with the uplifting of the elect 
and the sending of the angels and the archangels. The very some of the very same men who get killed for this truth is going to be resurrected as uh, as with the power of a god. You know, so we have to trust in the heavenly Father. We have to trust in the Son. We have to trust in these prophecies. All right, fuck all that shit. This is not the time, man. We got to be like my man's in one of my favorite little scenes uh, in Sin City, the first one, when they had my man's in the torture seat. You know, they was torturing him. Uh, they had him in an electric chair. They electrocuted him for, like, damn near, like, 15, 30. Basically, they electrocuted him long, which was supposed to electrocute somebody before they died. And they turned it off. They looked at him. He looked up. He said, is that all you, he's like, is that, is that all you pans he's got? You know? <laughs> and he spit out a mouthful of blood. You know, he was hurting. He was in pain, but he didn't give a shit. He was like, I'm not, I ain't finna switch up. You know, this is what it is. And they was like... Basically, they got mad, and they turned it back on, and they finished them off, you know? But I always thought that was a cold scene. Man, we not finna be on the chopping block crying like a hoe. We, hey, the Lord either gonna put a spirit of silence on us or put a spirit of rebuke on these MFers, and we gonna do what we gotta do. All right, so that's about it for this video. Just dealing with the point that, you know, don't let these heathen, don't let them knock you off your pivot, which is something they always try to institute and do because they know that if they can stop us from believing, then they have us. All right, so with that, I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechach Rosh, to honor to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all the elect Akim, Wah, Akwathim, learning, teaching, truth, and sincerity. And I'm going to say Shalom.